Welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This is episode 266. I'm your host, Chris Britton. Let's go. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of your latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me again in the studio this week is my sexy ranch hand co host, Calder Ness. What's going on, Calder? Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. I'm glad you're back this week. What were we doing last week? A uh, bunch of stuff. I was in the woods camping, 4th of July. Um, oh, right on. Crazy, crazy. So, normally on Dial H, we like to start us off with what made us happy this week. Is that part of what made you happy? It is. There's quite a few things that actually made me happy. Yeah, um, it is. So, uh, Far From Home came out on Monday, was their premiere. I got pretty nostalgic since they only had midnight premieres. The last midnight premiere I went to actually wasn't Avengers, it was Dark Knight. Um, but still, I, I felt really cool. Uh, going to a midnight premiere again uh, until I woke up the next morning and was wicked tired. But Far From Home seriously made me super happy. No spoilers at all. I know Chris hasn't seen it yet, and probably a lot of people either. But I really, I really like the movie. Um, sure, there are some problems like every Marvel movie, but I, I seriously, I freaking loved it. Jake Gyllenhaal's amazing actor. Uh, he was, he was just great. Very enjoyable. Uh, next up, I got like a pretty good list. Uh, I was crossover. There's a lot of crossovers that happened in this last week. Uh, me and Mr. Clicksplix, you know, I, I crossed over with him a lot, and uh, we I went ahead and I talked about our Origins teams. Um, then I did a, keep going to call it crossover, but Married to the Clicks, I was on their Meta Lab. Um, I don't remember if I mentioned that on the podcast or not, I believe. Uh, it was sometime before this last podcast, so I wouldn't have had the chance. But that was a live stream. That was two Mondays ago or whatever, like three weeks ago. So go check that out for sure. That's on their YouTube channel. And then I went over uh, – Superfan Lucas Van Holland has been writing articles for the ROC. Um, so he decided to try a new, a new style for his articles, and that was uh, kickstarting the ROC's YouTube channel. And basically, we did comedians in cars getting coffee, but it's clicks players playing chess, superhero chess. Either way, we played chess. His phone recorded it. Uh, that is the first game of chess I've played in two years, um, and it shows. It really shows. <laughs> it was it was so, it was terrible, and I'm not gonna lie. It really uh, it was a great time. We did a really cool, casual, fun interview. I wasn't worried about winning. I honestly never am. Um, so, um, but that, don't that don't try to watch well. it. That yeah, as well. <laughs> don't try to watch it. Be like, man, Calder's gonna throw out some crazy chess. No, I'm not good at it. What at does all. a bishop do? It goes well, a straight not? line. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It goes <laughs> diagonal. I know what all the pieces do, which wasn't helpful because it was on a, a little computer thing, so they all showed me where they were gonna end up anyways, and I was like, oh, that was oh, that's my like one. Cheating. It totally is cheating. Um, so yeah, that was like everything. Made me really happy. Uh, Fourth of July. Uh, I, I, I have too many things. Uh, Fourth of July, I went to a rodeo in Belfouche, South Dakota. It has 6,000 people in it, but their grandstands and their rodeo is ginormous. It was awesome. I loved it. I love going to rodeos. They had a ton of people. No one in my family was competing in it this year, but it was always great to watch good rodeo. Um, then we went ahead. I said we went camping. That was awesome. We got rained out like crazy, though. We never went on the boat, never got to wear my cool red, white, and blue swim trunks. Bummer, but still, I love Fourth of July. It's great. Uh, we went around. All these great places in the Black Hills in South Dakota. There's a lot of good antique shops. People are like, it's taking so long, Calder. Hurry up. And I'm, no, I'm sorry. Um, but this guy, only place in South Dakota, this guy sells like Star Wars toys. He just is a huge Star Wars collector. And every time I go there, I like to buy like one or two things. And he totally swindled me and got me to buy like three things. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I was I was a sucker. He's like, this Boba Fett is, is, a, is different. It's a factory uh, mistake or whatever. And I'm like, yep, I'll pay 30 bucks for it. I'm already there. So, um, yeah. So that and I got a brand new Captain America shield. Uh, the 75th anniversary Metal Captain America Shield was a limited run when it came out in 2016. It was $300, and at that time, I didn't just have 300 to blow on a shield, uh, so I bought the $100 plastic one. I finally had enough. Uh, it was not for 300 It was actually a little bit cheaper than that, which is awesome, uh, but a good eBay seller. I bought the shield from them, and it came in. It's this nice, heavy uh, Captain America Shield. It's a beautiful display piece, and that also uh, really made my week. So that is... Everything that made me happy. Now, I have a bunch of stuff that made me super angry, and that was the last podcast. But I'm going to let Chris go ahead and do his what made him happy. 
Yeah, we'll try and stay away from the. I think I heard a bit about the angry stuff before we actually hit record. Today. Ranch is so good. The ra- <laughs> it goes on everything, and ranch chips are delicious. They're so much better. Okay. Anyways, ra- ranch does not go in coffee, though, right? No, you know, that's, no, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, I don't drink coffee, but I assume it doesn't. But I mean, like salad. Ew, who's gonna eat leaves and, and garbage? Like, boom, put ranch on it. It's delicious. You know, I, you know carrots, I'm, celery. I'm, I'm one of those weird people. I actually eat salad without any kind of dressing at all. I, I don't like dressing. You would, Chris. Yeah, you would. <laughs> you would. Uh, but like, dude, everything you like, you said like, oh, who put pizza? Who put ranch on pizza? I do. Ranch on pizza is amazing, Chris. It's you awesome. You would. <laughs> ranch on everything. Burgers, chicken strips, uh, whatever, wings, but whatever. That's a whole different tangent. Okay. Ranch right. dressing. Ranch dressing. Well, what made me happy this week? This week has felt like an enormously long week for me, and that is because before I leave, get shipped off, I decided to take some time. Uh, I, I basically already quit my job, you know, and not really quit, but like I'm on leave or whatever, like extended leave, and I was like, I'm going to go to my dad's. So I drove down to southern Illinois. I spent a whole week with my father, and it was, like, this awesome experience. Like, it was one of those experiences where you thought it was a movie-level experience of, like, a, a man and his son, that level. We, we, went, we went fishing. We went, uh, we went kayaking. We went shooting. We ate a bunch of really good food, cooked out for, uh, obviously, the 4th of July um, I got to see the rest of my family while I was down there as well. Uh, it was just a really, really good time that I had. And every day was like one of those days where it was so packed back to back. I mean, I was getting up at like 5.45, 6 o'clock every day, and I wasn't going to bed until like midnight every night because we were so busy doing just things, like everything that we could like come up with to fit into a day we were just trying to do. And I'm like – how how was that only a week long? It feels like an entire month, but um, it led to a lot of like great pictures, um, some pretty stupid videos, and oh, we, we were driving around in a side by side. Do you know what those are? Do you know what a side by side is? Yeah, Chris, I know what a side by side is. Thank you. You very don't know much. what it's. No, it's like it's like a hyped up ATV golf cart mix. Yes, that's exactly right? what it is. Yeah. If anybody yeah. out there doesn't know what it is, man, we were in like. <laughs> a freaking river driving that thing around and i it was just a lot of stuff man dude i've i've rolled more side by sides than you've been in don't don't start <laughs> do you know what a side by side is well i thought you just like rode horses and stuff up there I, I didn't even know that they had electricity up in there until like last year mm, that cuts deep <clears throat> that's... <laughs> Okay, well, that is what made me happy, so hopefully those stories at least made That's awesome. someone, someone out there a little bit happy. We will get into uh, some Heroclix-related stuff in the news section. This is totally about a week and a half too old, um, but I, I, I forgot to mention it on the last podcast, and that was... WizKids released an article. It is explaining the WWE rules uh, and how they are going to kind of work with regular hero cl- uh, hero clicks. It is called the multiverse rules. However, I don't actually recommend going and reading that article. If you want a better interpretation of it, like a better explanation, I legitimately thought that you and I, you and Cal- Calder and I, did a better job of explaining what they were trying to say in episode 262. So if you're genuinely curious about that and you haven't been able to go and read that, just go listen to uh, episode 262. You'll get a better understanding of it because we asked questions, and they just put in there kind of like what was taken directly from their slides. Did you have anything that – like? did you read that article first of all? Yeah, I did. It was honestly uh, kind of like the same thing they said, but it for some reason it didn't feel as comprehensive. I don't know why, but it just felt off. Like it was like missing like one thing that made it – it was weird, yeah. So anyway, I just uh, thought that was a little weird that – I don't know. I thought we asked like really good questions, and that article clearly came, came out after Origins. Yeah, so I'm, for I'm sure. wondering like what – someone – maybe have sat down and written that article before origins but if not 
they did a really bad job of explaining any of the questions that we had because they didn't explain any of the questions that we had inside no. of that article. So not really worth reading. Are we did a better jo- we are better journalists than they are at publicizing their own information. Just saying. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just don't want to. It was like, well, I'd say we're, you know, I don't, I'm, I wouldn't say we're, give me a picture of the Spider Man better, but we're pretty all right. <laughs> we're okay. All we're right. okay. Well, that's honestly all we have in the news. I mean, obviously, we are in another week of Regenesis that is going on out there. All of the dials have been spoiled on the realms. If you want to go and re- uh, read those, also, I'm not really sure. Are they on Let's Clicks already? Or not. I didn't get a chance to check. They might be. Um, I feel like Calder's probably looking at that right you now. You know who's, who's – I'm like the hacker in the movie. Like he sets up his little bowl of uh, like dumb candies. He like cracks his fingers really quick. <laughs> you know, and he's like, don't worry. Oh, I'm going to get in there. You're my you man know? in the chair. Man in the chair. That's right. That's Spider-Man reference. Yeah, except I'll come up with a better reason why I'm in the computer than Ned did. That was he really took the fattest L of all of them. He had to <laughs> poor guy. Uh, well, uh, we can move on because that's that's like all of the news. Look, at, look how slow the man in the chair is uh, today. Yeah, you're a terrible, I, terrible man. Oh shoot, they don't. I just I can't <laughs> sit there somewhere. <laughs> Um, we, we can move on. This is the second episode of this month, though, so it is the current hero, uh, heroic ranking up ceremony, and I am genuinely excited to say that this is the most amount of mobility and people jumping on in a heroic ranking up ceremony than we've ever had, which is really, quite honestly, like great news for me because it's like a nice sign off, you know, because this is the last one I get to do. So I'm like, yes, this is amazing. There's so many people that jumped in this. So let's go ahead and jump into the uh, July heroic ranking up ceremony. We have two people that have ascribed the status of citizen, and that is none other than Loyal Miller. You have heard his name on the podcast many times in our community section, as well as the man, the myth, the legend, Jedi Legends. So thank you, gentlemen, for bef- uh, both finally becoming citizens. We appreciate that. Uh, moving from the rank of citizen to vigilante is our man in Finland. Uh, that's a little... Uh, Precursor to next week's episode, wink, wink, uh, that is Tiamu, uh, and we really appreciate that, man. And then uh, lastly, and I don't know how this panned out, but it did the way it did, moving from protagonist to superhero or supervillain, we had three people moving at the same time. Benjamin Umansky, Michael Miller, and Mock Taskmaster all moving to the rank of superhero or supervillain. So... Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, everyone. Uh, and if you did move to superhero or super villain, you want to give us what your superhero or super villain name, your made up name, was going to be for the podcast, go ahead and tweet that in or message us in on Facebook. Although I feel like Mock Taskmaster, that one's pretty on the nose. I feel like he's going to be a villain. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. What? So, yeah, but, um, that is, that's really exciting. I'm, genuinely excited about everybody that did get to um, move on uh do you ha- did you find that on online or yeah you just give so it they have pretty much most of avengers black panther up but they do not have regenesis up. okay all right well we can just move directly into the community section there are dozens of us dozens every week on tuesday we put a community tuesdays question up on facebook and on twitter uh this week's community tuesdays question was july 4th is all about independence freedom fireworks and good food are there any clicks that you are going to play this week that embodies these qualities obviously not everyone that listens to us is uh, american so they would not be actually participating in a july 4th celebration but even then some of the listeners that are definitely not american jumped in anyway which we appreciate so in the future if we ever put like kind of a question out there it doesn't really include everybody we just appreciate you guys trying that's pretty cool calder do you want to start us off on facebook yeah absolutely david herbert said gonna have to go back up with iron patriot and the red white and blue aim agents i only managed to get like two of those that that whole battle royal because like everyone wanted them so everyone was snatching them up oh for sure 
My first answer on Twitter is from, let's see, this is Citizen Kirby Ronnie. That's a man that's making our maps. He's amazing. He said, I like to bring out the new ADW cap with Mjolnir or bombshells to patriotic games. However, last year the stipulation was red, white, and blue on figures. That's common, right? You've heard about that before. Yeah. Uh, my friend brought a team of people wearing the Union Jack. Uh Trooper, Jenny Sparks, Union Jack. So I'm sorry, sorry, that's not allowed. Uh, no, yeah, that's, that's like it's fake. Yeah, against the spirit of the game. <laughs> I mean, it, it fits. It fits your parameters, sure. Against the spirit of the game. Although one of the original American flags that was proposed did have a Union Jack in the top left corner, where only if I get to throw all his pieces in the harbor. <laughs> what? Thank you, bringing bringing history into the podcast. We appreciate that. Back to Facebook. <laughs> Ah, oh, man. Oh, I love it. I love it so freaking much. Tristan Campos said, I finally got my brick at Black Panther and the Illuminati and pulled good old Captain America. My team is set around him. Also, thanks for the birthday wishes. I plan to start the patron soon. Have a good, fun holiday. The, the patron. patron. The patron. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but he pulled that rare Captain America. By the way, that Captain America pulls his weight and everyone else on the team. He is such a good use of 100 points. I love him so much. That sculpt's really good, too. Oh, it's awesome. Like, uh, bullets getting deflected off of it. Pretty sweet. Uh, Citizen, newly anointed Citizen Jedi Legend, said, I don't get to play with the gang this week, but I would have run Cap, Jubilee, and Zombie Abe Lincoln. The Great Emancipator, Zombie Abe Lincoln. You know. That's pretty good. That's yeah. pretty good. Uh, James Craddock said, I plan on using the Super Air Starfire, independent, free, and fireworks. Uh, sum her up pretty well. And I was like, oh, yeah, I kind of agree with that. That's pretty cool. Right, 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 right. Uh, Vigilante Collectible said, I played Kang the Conqueror on the 4th of July, and he'll be probably ruling the world someday. So, yes? How is Kang? How does Kang have anything to do? At all? No, nothing. Nothing at all, dude. He hasn't even, like, been an American character. Like, in all his different, like, alter ego, like, versions of himself. Um, but Kang is still fun. So if you put him on an Avengers, yeah, the idiot has the Avengers keyword for some he, reason. So He just loves Kang. That's what it is. Kang is pretty cool. Um, Citizen Peter Marshfield said, The motorized patriot with Captain America from Nick Fury, and in the center of it all, Sentinel Cap. Great team. So, okay, in... Playing now, that Patriot, uh, the motorized Patriot, is so overcosted. Ooh, he's bad. Oh. But has to go down in history as one of the greatest sculpts in the history of Hero Clicks. He's awesome. <laughs> Have you ever like like run two of those on the map at the same time? It just it screams awesomeness. I uh, finally got one actually just recently. He's awesome, right? I think. Oh, he, he looks played... amazing. It's yeah. Beautiful. Um. Last year, you played one against me. Oh, he was on the team, baby. Did yeah, he, he do was anything? There. Not no. really. He was on the team. <laughs> he was there. <laughs> he did motorized Patriot things. Uh, by the way, it's kind of actually accurate because if you play Bioshock Infinite long enough, at first when you start playing the game, those Patriots are pretty imposing. You play it long enough, enough playthroughs, they're not a big deal at all. You can you can smoke those things. So, yeah, it's thematic. We have superhero, maybe, or supervillain, uh, Michael Miller, who said, If my group was meeting, I would play Time Cap with Winter Soldier. Which one's Time Cap? Is that the one in, in the ice? Ice, yeah. Um, no, I assume Time Cap means this newest one, because he starts the time gem. Equipment. Oh, yeah, that makes it more yeah. sense. Isn't every yeah. every Captain America is Time Captain America, kind of? In a way. <laughs> <laughs> A man uh, without time, or whatever the thing, man out of time. Uh, Chris Rizzi said, nope, I'm Canadian. And yes, Canada Day just happened on July 1st. I would have played Wolverine. He's the best Canadian. Also, Deadpool is second best. So, A, I'm cool with that. Because, A, dude, respect, like, mad respect, rep your own country, have that good patriotism. But, B, there's not really a bunch of competition for who's the best Canadian superhero. Uh, no yes, offense. Yes, there is. I no, there is disagree. so not. Puck exists, all right? And Puck is the bee's knees. What a joke. Because <laughs> he's the size of an actual bee's knees? Sure. No, girl, girl is Canadian. She's half Canadian. Doesn't count. She, that is a – what? No, she has she's Canadian half. citizenship. She has she's dual half. citizenship. She's half. She's American and Canadian. She's yeah, Canadian. Only one, only one part matters, though. So <laughs> – Thank you, Chris Rizzi. The squirrel for part. That's the part that matters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Shut up. All right. Super fan, uh, Little Plastic Superheroes. His superhero name is the Ruffian. He said, playing with this team with complete ex with uh, complete expectations on losing. Uh, we have let's see, Black Panther, Captain Britain, Nick Fury, Union Jack. Nick, oh, two Union Jacks. Uh, you have the Blue Union Jack and the Red Union Jack from Earth X. Jason Blood and Proteus from World's Finest and Uncanny X Men, respectively, came out to an even 500 points. Did it? Did you fail? Did you lose? That's what we need to know because I got no update on this, and that was four days ago. Uh, John Marilla said Miss America M17009. So that is the uh, Whiskey's LE Miss America. I've never, I think, I only played her once on a team, but she's cool. I like her. Maybe if you would play her on a team, you would have won when I stomped you with the 1 million Avengers BC. No, I don't, th I don't think she would help that much. <laughs> Citizen. Uh, Chris Kurtz said Dazzler and Jubilee. So I think I'm playing an X-Men team. The only restriction is the characters have to be American. I'm not going to read that hashtag, but all right, cool. <laughs> Uh, for sure. I mean, even if, I don't know if Dupe's American or not, he's probably not, he's some other alien, but like, he's got the stars and stripes on his, uh, on his easy rider. So they, they should totally let that one in. Like, come on, come yeah. on. By the way, trying to make American X-Men is, is that's going to be a tough team. It's going to be tough to make. American X-Men. That, yeah. that are also the dramatic. whole, the whole giant size X-Men team almost. They were not American. Yeah. So, so, like, you can play your Cyclops and your Iceman, like, Beast and stuff. I don't know how thematic that's going to be uh, for Fourth July, but, like, you're in the right you're in the right uh, category with Jubilee and stuff, for sure. Yeah. Uh, John Carl said, playing a 400-point America game this week, Captain Iron America and the Iron Man Iron Patriot duo at 200 with the Phoenix Force assigned. Two fragments, two figures assigned, baby. I love the Phoenix Force. Uh, I actually never played that uh, Iron Patriot Iron Man duo, but I love Captain Iron America, so yeah, let's do it. Both of those pieces are actually really good. Nice. So, and then you add a fragment to both of them. I kind of I want to know how that panned out to see if he. Won. Oh yeah, for sure. That'd be good. Uh, Vigilante Tiamu said uncharacteristically, "We don't have <laughs> we don't have a Fourth of July theme game this year." No, yeah, he's in Finland. That makes a lot of sense. Just a regular. That'd be weird, right? <laughs> that'd be weird. It'd be a little. It'd be a little odd. Like the middle of Helsinki, there's like stars and stripes marching down the parade. Like Happy July Fourth, ladies and that doesn't make any sense. Just a regular old 400 points silver theme, uh, silver age theme team. So instead of Cap, Boom Boom, or Volstag, nice. I'll be bringing the Elders of the Universe, and you did picture. Uh, we got, we got, we got. You know the the most popular Elder of the Universe, Deadshot. In addition to <laughs> Voyager, Challenger, and uh, I think that's the – is that the Gardener? I can't remember which one that is. Is he on a big thing with a laser possessor. coming count, coming out of his head? No, nope, Possessor. It's okay. Possessor, yeah. Lionhead Stick, gotcha. Yep. Lionhead Stick, man. Uh, you know, you say that, but uh, in America, a certain Cinco de Mayo is very popular here. and <laughs> like, So why not uh, celebrate Fourth of July in Finland? Just saying. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. Hey, yeah, that's um, well. I think I think Cinco de Mayo is like really this Americanized version of what used to be a different celebration. I don't know. Okay, okay. Then St. Patrick's Day. We could go on forever. But whatever. <laughs> okay, uh, this is uh, this is accurate as well. Frankenstein O'Hara. He just sent a picture of Uncle Sam. I love Uncle Sam. I think he's awesome in comics. That's probably like one of the worst figures ever. Uh, is that the only one that they've ever made? That's the only Uncle Sam ever made. We so need a new one. He's 140 points. All his, the names of his powers are amazing. Like, seriously, just go look at an Uncle Sam card. Try to buy it. Whatever. It's awesome. I love, from sea to signing she's it's like Lee Plyme and stuff. Like, it's great. I love him. <laughs> but he's bad. Oh, he's so bad. He's, he's so bad. Um, okay. Is it my, my go? It's your go. Uh, I have one more. That's it. And that is from Michael Fedor. He said, no. Clicks this week has been canceled this week. That's sad. <laughs> Everybody was too busy celebrating is what it was. So maybe I guess, really you know, that's that. fair. That's totally. Yeah. Uh, and last one on Facebook as well. Don Springer said, Captain Venom, he's about freedom and eating brains. And we, we should have the right to eat brains. That's we a freedom <laughs> as a symbiotic person in this nation of symbiotes, symbiote America. I demand <laughs> You know, I never got around to reading that storyline Venomized, but I really neither, did. Neither did I, and it looks really good. 
Right on. All right. Well, thank you everybody for jumping in and answering our community Tuesday's question. We got more in the community, so we're just going to. So, Chris, wait, 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 Chris. What? What would what would your American team have been? Oh, Iron uh, uh, Patriot, the mechanized Patriot, motorized. That's what it's called, motorized Patriot. Just like as many of those as I can fit on a team. Oh, nice. Uh, so I was going to do a 500 point game with a buddy. It didn't work out because obviously you're all gone. But I did a uh, Gauntlet Captain America. Iron Patriot from this most recent set, Avengers Infinity. And then three reds, three whites, and three blue aim agents came out to an even 500 points. So I can't oh, wait nice. to win that team. It's probably not a great cap, like 500 point team since Captain, it's all on Captain America. And he only has six clicks and like six attacks he's done. But ooh, we got that perplexed. It's going to be nasty. I'm, I'm curious to see what he whips up and what we play. But that would have been my uh, patriotic team. Right on, right on. Okay, well, we will now move on to Citizen. Jedi Legends, Hero Clicks Tip of the Week. Help you, I can. Yes. Take you to your destination, I will. Move is not the same as all capitalized letters. Move, colon. Reread that power again to see if it is uh, if it affects it. So, for example, you can move with sidestep, but it, it affects as free, that's all caps, colon, action. Not a move, that's all caps, colon action so i'm going to try to explain this it makes more sense when you can see it because it's kind of a visual thing on the card you know the difference between an all capitalized letter and not a capitalized or a word i mean a uh, capitalized word so Carter, explain to me how sidestep is a move even though it is also an action uh so it is a free action all caps to move up to two squares and the move is non-capitalized the reason that is is because you can't use, like, Phasing Teleport or Leap Climb with Sidestep because those are MOVE, all caps, action. So it's the word that begins the thing. So the very first word is what kind of action it is, and then what happens after that. Just like how Running Shot is a power to then do a move and then an attack action, it's not a move action, it's not an attack action. It is a power action to then do move and uh, move and attacks. So just kind of like how that is the best way I can sort of explain it. Yeah, it's a little bit difficult. I remember when they first kind of introduced that idea of all capitalization on a word versus non-capitalization on a word. And you're like, why does this mean two entirely different things? And then you also have to worry about, like, exactly what you just said. In which order does it occur? Is it like whatever's before the colon is what it is? And then it may say uh, something inside of the power, like give this character a move action, and it'll be regular, like, non-capitalized or under case the word move so just pay real close attention to that because it might come up and also you might be able to find some of those figures out there that like especially some of the like weird older figures that say something along the lines of whenever this character moves do this do x or whatever it is so that would trigger on anything that a move action is part of it so that would include um like your sidestep, it would include your phasing teleport. It would just be a straight move action if you just want to move them up. That also is part of it. So just pay attention to that. It might come up in a future game. Um, I just thought of a rules question, though, while I was saying Ooh. that. What would happen if a character had the words, whenever this character moves, do X, and your, your opponent mind controls your character and moves your character? they would then trigger that whenever this character moves effect as well, even though it's on their turn, correct? Yes, it would. All right. Well, hopefully maybe that helps some people out. Uh, and by the way, I just want to point out, Jedi Legend, Citizen Jedi Legend, said, can we get, can we throw out some retweets and spread the good word? Absolutely. Not only am I going to retweet it, but he also got seven other retweets uh, on just a hero clicks tip. I say not, I say just a hero clicks tip, but it's a really appreciated thing that a service that Jedi Legend does every week um, to put those out there. So make sure you, guys, you are retweeting and liking his stuff, and uh, it'd be cool if we can get yeah, those, those uh, hero clicks tips as well on like maybe on Facebook or something. But what is that? What's that supposed to? What's that supposed to mean? I don't know. You, maybe you, maybe somebody you... who uh, runs the Facebook might actually want to do his job. I'm just kidding. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Dang, Savage. What a guy. Um, I did put a call out last week for anybody that wanted to write in uh, some kind of last-minute questions if they wanted to know anything. 
uh, about like my history of the game or whatever before I head out. And we did get a uh, question. It was actually last week, but I, he got it in just a little bit too late, so I missed it before we recorded. But Vigilante Collectible said, uh, how did you get into the game? And how, mu- how many clicks have you accumulated so far? So the second question is actually really a lot simpler. Um, probably not as many as you would think. I'm a very particular individualistic buyer. Uh, I, I don't gamble. I just I hate the idea of gambling, like, in general, in life. Like, you won't find me going to the boat to throw down some money on the roulette table. I just don't do stuff like that. And I entirely view blind pulls as gambling. So because I've conflated those two entirely, I just don't buy blind things and because i don't i don't actually end up accumulating a bunch of stuff that i don't want so um i know people are like oh i have boxes and boxes and boxes i have probably i don't know like 400 pieces maybe 500 or something like that and that's it in like the 15 well not not quite 15 it's probably like 12 or 13 years that i've been playing hero click so that's that's probably not that bad what about you uh to answer the like how many i have i Currently, I have every single Captain America. Like, that's just uh, it's a constant thing I'm going. I also collect anyone whose uh, name is Captain America. So, like, the uh, Truth Captain America and then, like, Falcon and Sam Cap, all of those I also have collected. And then I've recently started doing this with sets I really like is that I also have all the common and uncommons. And then I just put them all in a box. So like, Earth X, I have everything with the Earth X keyword as well as every common and uncommon from Earth X. Same thing with uh, Black Panther. And then... The rest of my collection is really weird because I sort it by keyword and not set. So I have just the Avengers I like. None of them are even like comic versions of the team, but they're just the Avengers I like. Like that's it. A bunch of S.H.I.E.L.D., a bunch of Hydra. Um, I honestly, I go through my collection uh, every time there's a rotation, uh, not just if it's Golden Age, even if it's modern. I'll, I'll look and I'll say, have I used these figures? And then do I even have a plan to use these figures at all? And I just... I, I do that a lot, honestly. I, I'm constantly selling, getting rid of, slimming down my collection as much as possible uh, to make room for all the Templar Knights I have and then all of the Cowboys I have and all the Outriders I need to have and all the AM agents and blah, 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 blah. So that's pretty much just how I collect it. I go based off keyword. I fill out a keyword uh, with characters I like, not necessarily the whole thing, and then that's what I collect. So somewhere around, you know... A couple hundred pieces, I would totally could not give an estimate. I mean, I have the full, I have all three Captain America sets totally completed, and then the next Captain America set, it's gonna have to be totally completed. So I'm gonna have, I have quite a bit of uh, figures, um, but only ones I really love. So yeah. Yeah, I, I try to definitely not collect anything that's not gonna mean anything to me. If I know, if I don't know who a character is, I basically know I'm not gonna get them. It just doesn't For make sure. any sense. It doesn't make any sense to get them because it's like you know. You don't, if you don't like them or they're not good or and they're not good, you're never going to play them. So I used to totally do that. But then there are just some characters, like game-wise, that I love. Like Swarm. I have no idea who Swarm is, but he's a German scientist made out of bees. Yes, please. I'm buying it already. German, German Nazi scientist German Nazi scientist. Bees. Yeah, so, like, I'm already there. I'm, I've already bought it, you know? Like, I don't really want a boxing ring or that Superman, but, like, there's a Muhammad Ali click. Yes, I will absolutely take it. Thank you very much. Like, I've never seen or heard of Flex Metallo before, but now I own him because I have to. So, I mean, like, that's, like, there's a hero clicks like, reason. Like, there's a comic book, real-life reason. Like, why do I want this person? I like him. And then there's, like, a hero clicks like, this person's awesome and dumb and stupid, and I just want to own him. And, like, so, yeah. So I will try to uh, pretty succinctly put the f- answer to that first question, like how I got into Hero Clicks. I because I've explained this on the podcast before, but I don't remember which episode it was. But I told like the whole story once before. So if you really want to go back and listen to the whole story, but here's the like pretty annotated version of it, which is I, w- I think it was like twelve or thirteen or something like that, and I went into a mire. And with my mom, and it was like a rainy day, and we didn't have anything to do. And we were walking down a toy aisle back when Meyer actually sold. Uh, if anyone doesn't know out there, Meyer is kind of like a Walmart or a Target. Um, and we, they they sold the Infinity Challenge starter set. Had a little transparent window. You could see the little figures in it. We just thought it was just a board game. We did not know it was like a collectible thing, probably because we didn't really read the box. Because I'm pretty sure it says right on the front, like, collectible game. Uh, so we bought it, my brother and I, and we went home and we taught ourselves how to play using the original rulebook and then just kind of played 
from there, uh, the uh, here's a better story probably. I don't know if I told this one on the podcast. I remember one time there was this uh, website. Can't remember the name of the website, but they were selling indie clicks. Uh, there was a they used to sell them in bricks of like 48 packs, and a pack had four figures in it. And they had some kind of like closeout sale, and they were sold an entire brick for twenty dollars. So I nice. remember, yeah, when that came out, we were like, heck yeah! So we just had weekly tournaments at our house, literally every week. We just opened like I think it was like two packs a week, and just played through the entire indie set. We just kept going until we ran out of forty-eight packs every week. It was like one of the best twenty dollars I ever spent in this in this game. So that's probably a more fun story than how I got into the game of Heroclix. But um, uh, I think that's it on what we had for questions this week. If you do want to ask like just a random question like that or something, just send it in, and we'll see if we can answer that on uh, the podcast. We did get an email. Uh, I told you we do actually get those from time to time. Uh, this is from Superfan, Eric Caves, who said, I'd like to give a shout-out to the YouTube channel Clicks in It. Apparently, it's run by some people at one of my local venues, so we get that Wisconsin representation. I started attending their venue just recently, and apparently they like to film the final round to show off their channel. If a channel is ever going to succeed, it needs people to know it exists in the first place, so I hope you guys can put it out there for us. Um, no, no, yeah, no problem. We can, of course, do that. And then uh, just make sure that you, as well, are spreading the good word of Dial H inside of that venue, and hopefully we can get some new listeners in there. Uh, and let's see, Matt, I think I uh, met uh, the guy with clicks in it at Origins. He he knew who we were, and he was like, "Yo, what's up?" I have also, I also have a YouTube channel or whatever, and I've like started watching some of their videos. It's good stuff. Oh, right on, cool. I did not know that, so that's really interesting. But yeah, of course, um, I've said this before, and uh, I will continue to believe this. the The Hero Clicks community is so much different than that of like Magic the Gathering or an, another one of these main collectible games out there where i felt like everybody in those like the content creator world they were always competing with each other for like views and likes and retweets and clicks and stuff like that i just don't think it's like that in hero clicks i think that it part of making the community a better community is just like everybody is putting each other up instead of putting each other down so of course we will definitely give you guys a shout out and you know hopefully you guys will do the same because it just makes for a nicer world uh, let's jump into Malcolm Rush's question block. Hit it, Calder. All right. So Malcolm Rush writes in, Hero Clicks questions, but my Hero Clicks history, first Hero Clicks I bought was the Hyper Time set. He says he plays mostly friendly games. Last time he played, it was DC Icons. What was that, like 80, 87 years ago or something yeah, crazy? Yeah, exactly, literally 87 <laughs> years ago, too. I almost played a Heroclix game two years ago, but I couldn't meet up with the rule of three guys. Last month, Dialage for Heroclix introduced me to another Heroclix player. He was going to visit Japan in a couple of weeks, and I will meet up and play a game. The question is about people who have not played for over ten years and are going to play a game in a couple of weeks. So this is people who are just getting back into Heroclix and kind of a what they should do, what I should play, what's going on, what are, what are all these rules, what's pink powers, what's uh, light green powers. I don't know if that was a thing or not back then, but whatever. Anyways... So we have five good questions here. So what changes should I be aware of when I play the game in a couple of weeks? So I would definitely start out with read the pack, P-A-C, powers and abilities card. Read that thing. Read it once. Read it twice. Read it three times. The base game pretty much stayed the same. The aspect of you move a figure, you give them an action token, you need to clear action tokens. You can give them up to two action tokens before they can't do anything. And there's some outliers uh, to a lot of what I'm going to say, just like there's outliers in every single game. But these are the general rules. But the powers are – and the powers, the traits – uh, the the improved movement, the improved targeting, uh, all of that stuff, that's mostly what you're going to need to memorize. Because even to this day, because of the 2017 rules change, I was messing stuff up at Origins this year 
because I didn't do that. I should have done that. And in retrospect, I definitely should have done that because, you know, it it's not you minus two from your region roll anymore. It's half rounded up because everything in this game is rounded up. So just make sure you read the pack. I think that'll do you a lot of good. Uh, one of my like biggest things I had trouble with when the rules changed was the order of operations for the turn and getting the game set up. Because when you set up a game, and this is stuff that actually can really make or break a game, is you're supposed to set up, you know, you roll, you choose the map, you both set up your characters, and then you take turns placing objects and then special terrain. Like there's all these little things that everybody just kind of does all at once without actually taking the like the exact turn order. Um, turn order as well is the beginning of your turn phase, and then your actual Action phase, which is like you can't do free actions. Once you perplex something up or sidestep to try to get a leadership off, that's it. It's done. There's no beginning of your turn. That really messed me up for a really long time. So that's stuff I used to do all the time. So for sure, learning like the proper phase, how to play the game, is what I would focus on. Uh, number two, what are common mistakes returning players make? Returning players make? Uh, probably just <laughs> thinking that things stayed the same. That's going to be your number one mistake is just assuming things. Go back and read. Uh, now, we did an episode, and I, God, I can't remember what the episode was. It definitely came out in 2017 because that's when the uh, the rules changed. But we did a pretty comprehensive, we thought, or at least not, not so much comprehensive as what has definitely changed in the game. If you want to go back and listen to that, I – that's all going to be accurate now because there hasn't been another rules change since 2017. So that might really help as well. And while Calder's talking, I'll see if I can go back and find that episode. Yeah, for sure. Um, so comics, common mistakes I see a lot of the time is powers that combo together that just don't anymore. I, I love it when people try to hypersonic uh, with super strength and I get to say no. No, you can't do that. Because I hate hypersonic speed and super strength. There are people who, who love it out there, blah, 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 whatever. Get over it. Cry. Um, I freaking hated hypersonic speed and super strength. It does not feel good having someone run up and hit you for seven and then run away. And you're like, oh, they can keep doing that because I have three more or two more objects to hit me with. It's not awesome. It's not fun. So uh, certain combo, like power combo stuff, Invincible, if you play it. I mean, obviously, you're saying 10 years ago, so you don't know what Invincible even did anyways. Um, but like Invincible really messed people up for a while because that was kind of a, a wonky way at doing the same thing. Uh, so yeah, combo powers like Precision Strike doesn't go through Mastermind anymore. I learned that two weeks ago, and I just because I'd – a, I'd never gotten in that setup again, the same thing, and I was so used to Precision Strike, voiding out Super Senses, I totally remembered that part, that it only gets negative one on Super Senses, and then I always just assumed it still worked against Mastermind, and now it makes me really mad, like, I just realized this two weeks ago, and it makes me really mad that there's no way around Mastermind besides, like, Pulse Wave or Energy Explosion or Quake or whatever, uh, but still, I liked I really like doing a single target against it. Um, so, like, certain power combos, the way powers react to each other um, is definitely the most mistakes I see made. And, of course, Chris already said, look, just look at the pack, look at it back and forth. Like, basically the same thing as if you're a new player. you got to just, more than anything, like, you can read through the, the normal rule book, like, once or twice. But the pack, you got to just read it a million times just to make sure you understand how the powers work. Yeah, I can't find it. <laughs> oh, no. It was, um, it was probably like 170-something, I want to say. Well, I am seeing that you and I took over in September of 2017, and it came out in 2017. So there aren't that many episodes to like kind of parse through uh, in the show notes to get to the end of 2017. For sure. And you, you might be able to find it. So that's only that's only a few months, three months worth. So like 12 episodes to look at the show notes for and might answer your question. Right on. Uh, his third one was, what parts of the rule book should I read to freshen up? Uh, Chris, you want to take it? No. No. <laughs> I mean, it's been a minute since I actually read the rule book. We, we read it all. I, I mean, as soon as that rule book dropped, I went through that thing so meticulously. Do you remember? Do I happened? remember getting a million messages? Bzz, bzz, yeah, so yeah, that just, is so yeah, dude. It's pretty much all I did. I was like, oh, awesome. I was like, I, don't I, re even, I, don't I remember the rule book. I was like, nice. I had, I had a freaking Galaxy Note when it came out, and Galaxy Notes have styluses with them. And I remember as soon as I'm reading it on my phone, I was like, oh, that's changed. Screenshot, circle some stuff, send it to Calder, keep going. 
And some of that stuff, I was like, I'll send it to Calder, and maybe, maybe it hasn't really changed that much. I remember asking him, like, has this changed? And then he'd be like, no, that's still the same. I'm yeah. Like, okay, good. And then we like move on to the next thing. But I probably sent you like, hell, probably like sixty screenshots. It was a bunch. Yeah, it was a, a lot. lot. And then, of and then stuff. from all of that, we chose like ten to actually go into and do, which is crazy. Just shows how many rules changes there were. No, I actually really enjoyed that. I was at a dog show that day, and it was just it made it more entertaining. So much more entertaining. If you've ever been to a dog show, they're super boring unless you're a huge dog person. So. That, that made my day so much easier. Uh, for me, what part you should read, um, they have picture guides of adjacency and how to move and stuff like that. That is really important, especially with recent rules changes they made about how adjacency works and how moving works in regards to special terrain. So just brush up on how, like, moving, like, stairs. Like, you can be adjacent, you're adjacent for attacking, but you can totally move away from each other if you're on stairs, you know? Like, all, of, all that little stuff, um, I find that I mess up on moving probably the most – like, I straight up, someone was like, so why'd you place him there and not there? And I'm like, I don't know. Why? What does it matter? And he's like, yeah, if you would have placed him here, you could have done knockback, and then you would have killed her in one shot. I'm like, oh, I guess it does matter. So, like, uh, freshen up on, like, moving adjacency rules like that is another, like, more specific part you should definitely uh, be aware of. Number four, any suggestions for a fun team? I, I'm going to say the same thing. I, I feel like I've always said, and that is to use the figure's that are representative of characters that you actually like. If you just love Spider-Man, then use Spider-Man because you're not going to like say you pull off some crazy stuff with a random character like Tigra or something. You're like, "Okay, cool, that was yay, that was fun." But are you going to remember that game later on? But if you pull off some stupid stuff with one of your favorite characters, I feel like it burns it in your memory a little better. So later on, you can be like, I cannot believe I managed to pull that stupid stuff off with, in my, and this is a personal example, Hank Pym. The Hank Pym Legacy Box Set. One of my favorite Heroclix moments in all of me playing Heroclix. Freaking, it was like my Babe Ruth moment. I, I rolled double sixes with one of those ants with blades and exploit. And he, he's like, uh, okay, probs. So I was like, I'm going to roll double sixes again. I called it before it happened. I rolled double sixes again, and I was like, yes! And I was like, now I'm going to roll a six. Boom, six, baby! Seven penetrating <laughs> damage with an ant! I was like, that is so dumb! And you know I remember that? Not only because it was dumb, but because it was one of my favorite uh, Heroclix figures in the history of the game. And it's based off of a character that I legitimately like from the comic book. So use who you like. If it doesn't pan out the way you wanted it to, I mean, that is what it is. It's a game based on luck and strategy, but part of it is luck. But if it works out, holy cow, man, you're going to have so much fun with that. You're going to remember that stuff. Um, my answer is pretty much along the same thing. Play the characters that you want to play, um, for sure. I mean, I said before that I like... Also, just playing characters that do cool, unique things in the game of Heroclix, mechanic-wise. But honestly, if I was getting back into the game after so long, my team would just be all Captain America. Like, it's just that easy. Like, that's, that's what I would play. For the love of playing the game, that's what i play. Uh, number five, any other suggestions? Ooh. Any other suggestions? Uh, can, I, can I really just appreciate the fact that uh, some of our listeners reached out to other listeners to go and make this game happen? That's, yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I don't know much more I can tell you guys. I mean, you, you clearly already did all the legwork to build the community right there. Like, that's fantastic. I'm so genuinely happy that you made something like that happen. And uh, Calder and I, like, on our trip to Origins, we were talking ad nauseum about, like, what this game kind of means to us and it really came down to, or kind of like what the podcast and the game meant to us. And it, it came down to, like, Calder and I wouldn't have known each other had this podcast not existed first. And then we met each other, and then it led to, like, all of these wonderful memories that we have, of, like, going to Origins and doing this podcast for two, two and a half years or however long we've been doing it. And... That means more to me than winning any game that I've ever had, you know, like the, the relationships that I've built. So, like, I don't know if I have much, uh, like, things you guys need to know. You're already doing it. For sure. For sure. Um, 
extra stuff you absolutely need to know. I really can't think of anything besides, you know, being good at the rule book, whatever. I would say don't play Modern Age. Just have a whatever. Play Golden Age. Play whatever you want. You know, play something crazy, 1,000 points, 500 points, whatever. You know, I would just probably also keep it simple. I wouldn't do any crazy special rules like Shock the Turtle or, like, Boxing Match or whatever. So, like, just play some good vanilla hero clicks. Still try to use all the powers and all that great stuff, but just don't do crazy, like, I want to play 300 modern, and then, like, he brings whatever Unimine or, like, Kobic into some traders, and it's like, well, that's just not fun to play against because I just get locked out. Like, that's not how I want to come back to the game. Just play just a fun, super casual, just good game. That's what I would say. So I am totally clicking through the show notes of these past episodes to see if I can find this before the end of it. And one of the things I found in episode 182 in the show notes is John Cena is Dr. Manhattan. What was <laughs> What does that even mean? <laughs> so there, there were uh, – I totally remember this. This was so great. There were talks of having John Cena play Dr. Manhattan in a live-action uh, Watchmen. Obviously, we know that's not going to happen since it's, like, in the future or whatever. But just maybe John Cena was cast. And when ye oldy old man Dr. Manhattan comes out of nowhere, nowhere it's this blue John Cena. Like, it would be pretty great. It would be pretty great. Don't lie. Uh. Great. Uh, okay, well, is that all that we got from Malcolm Rush? That is it. And now I can't wait to play John Cena against Dr. Manhattan, which is now possible <laughs> in a couple of months. But yeah, that's everything from Malcolm Rush. That is very true. Because, uh, oh man, seriously though, Dr. Manhattan normally just does like, does like range combat expert or range combat. So that's super funny because on top dial, John Cena is going to be immune to Dr. Manhattan's range attacks. Oh, yeah, baby. You can't see me! I mean, that is not even specific to him, which is awesome, so... Oh, man, that's that's crazy. That's really good stuff, though. Yeah, it is, baby. Yeah. Uh, all right, well, uh, I don't have anything else for the community section, and unfortunately I was not able to find this in enough time, so maybe, hopefully, I can find it and at least tweet it out uh, so that you can re-listen to that episode. Do you have anything else? I, I think that's it for this week, man. Yeah, we don't have any birthdays this week. If you want a sexy Arabian birthday like we gave to Tristan Campos last week, then just make sure you let us know whose birthday it is, when it is, and we can get that out to you. Um, Two more episodes for me after this, so let's just have some fun, guys and gals, while we while I'm still around. I'd really appreciate that. And uh, oh, we I'm gonna. It's been a crazy week, like I said, but tomorrow. I am going to finally make it to the post office and get more dice sent off. So I think we are down to, like, our last, like, set maybe. I'm not really sure. It was, like, down to, like, three or four sets, and I think we might be out. But I'm not really sure. We might have one left. Right on, right on. So, uh, yeah, I'm good. It's all you. All right, fantastic. I can read us out of here then. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Bye, guys. Happy trails.